Make sure um, Andy and, and Phil does. In Deuteronomy chapter 29, 29, it says this. There are secret things of God that are just secret to God. It's kind of a little bit of a paraphrase. You can read it word for word. But there's things that God lets known, and that's the things that we need to live upon. So here's the bottom line to anything that's going to be taught today. There will be a rapture. There will be a seven-year period of time of tribulation, great tribulation, tribulation, Jesus calls it. And some people believe that great tribulation is going to be the devastation that happens in the last three and a half. Okay, and when we ever get the opportunity to, read, to study the Revelation, we'll go through a lot of that. But there will be a, a tribulation period of time. There will be a period when Christ comes back and reigns on earth. That's all through the Old Testament and also in the New Testament. There is going to be, as, as Terry pointed out in her, in her, I think Terry pointed out in her sermon um, Sunday, she, she also mentioned that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Those are the things that we can bank on 100% without a shadow of doubt. Christ came, he died on the cross, he rose from the dead, he is king. Okay, he has won the victory over sin, he has won the victory over Satan. When you read Revelations, I mean, excuse me, when you read Ephesians, it says we stand with what? The full armor of God. Okay, and we stand to fight against the, uh, the arrows because we have this armor of God on us. And we have this shield of faith, and we have what in our hands? The weapon? The sword, which is the word of God. And so we have that. That's, that's what we have as believers. And that's what God gives us, allows us to have. Those are things that we know for sure. And so when you read through this stuff, and when, and when you study, you know, despite what you believe in here and everything else, you've got to stay, you've got to say, Jesus didn't tell this for, to, to entertain us. He told us, and he told the disciples, and you'll see here in a minute that as Matthew's writing this, he says, it says in the little parentheses, for those who read this and understand, he, you know, Jesus knew that what was going to be written about him is still going to have to be read over and over and over again, even multiple generations and thousands of years later, for people to still understand what's going to say. So it's important to understand what's going to happen so that we be able to, one, Live by it. I love in the back, in the end of Revelation, John writes, Come, Lord Jesus, come. I mean, it was, in, in a lot of ways, it was the disciples' expectation that Jesus was going to come anytime. They really thought it was going to be soon. It's 2,000 plus years now, and Jesus hadn't come back yet. But guess what? Jesus is coming. And so, as believers, what we need to do is not get into arguments about different doctrines. But to know and say, hey, the Lord is coming. I love it. Um, our youth group is studying um, in the book of Acts. Kind of reading through. And right now we're in chapter 20. And I love it because um, Paul is leaving Ephesus. And he's got his leaders and stuff like that. And he's just, you know, he's pouring out his heart. But he's, I mean, he goes into one town. And, um, and he breaks bread. It's on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. Break bread and have a big... And he's preaching all night long. There's a young teenager kid sitting in the window. And he's just tired. And he falls asleep and falls out of the window. Third story. Falls on the ground dead. Paul gets over, lays on top of him. The board rises back to life again. Paul comes back in and continues to preach until dawn. Long Bible study. I think it's kind of cool. The thing is, is that Paul... His ministry, and this should be the same ministry with us, is that, hey, we need to be encouraging. Believers encouraging people who don't know Christ say, hey, here's, who, here's what salvation is all about. And to believers, we need to say, keep encouraging and say, hey, look, the Lord is coming. Do we live expecting the Lord to come any day? And we've talked about this before. You if you knew that story. Jesus was going to come tomorrow, yeah. would there be anything that you do differently today that you normally wouldn't have done? Because there is, then why aren't you doing it? So let's look at it. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. And we're going to start. Well, okay. Um, I want to start back at verse 9. And then they, and then they will deliver you to, um, to tribulation. Okay, so I want, to keep, I want to hone in on this word tribulation. Because a lot of times people, when they hear tribulation, 
They go, oh, this is talking about the seven year period of time. Tribulation means oppression. Okay? So they're going to deliver you to oppression. So he's in, in this chapter, he's speaking of things that are going to happen immediately to these to the disciples. He's speaking of things that are going to happen to the Jews. He's speaking of things that are going to happen to all believers. Okay? So it's kind of a combination. You know, it's kind of like, well, who is he talking to? But one thing you got to understand is when in chapter nine, when verse 9, when he says, they will deliver you to tri tribulation, to oppression, they did. You know, again, you go and read Acts, and you can see the tribulation that the, um, and the oppression that the um, early Christians faced. You can read today, and if you, if outside of America, you can see the tribulation and the oppression a lot of people face in India, in, in foreign countries, where um, there's other different religions that are coming against Christianity. And even in America, if you stop and look, start looking at it, America is starting to slowly change. And Christianity and the, and the belief in Christ is starting to be attacked in small ways. And we have to pay attention to that. Verse 10, many will, at that time, many will fall away and, be, and betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will rise and mislead many. Okay, let's just stop right there. We've seen this already. This, you know, and you read um, 1 John, you read Peter, you read Jude. I mean, you know, Paul's letters, they were constantly saying in, in chapter 20, he was telling the Ephesus, Look, I know there's going to be false teachers, there's going to be wolves coming in, even people within your own flock that are going to come in and teach false things. Okay? So, you know, they knew. I mean, God was telling them even then and even now, we've seen people who constantly say, Hey, look at me. And we see in America, more so probably in America, mainly because like we live here, is a lot of um, preachers who teach things that are sound good to the itchy ears, Paul writes in Timothy, but it's not really true sound gospel. And anytime you see a pastor or somebody that is doing a bunch of healing and is putting more glory on them than is putting on God, it's all about them. And you need to watch out for because that's false religion. And so many prophets will arise and many must lead because the lawlessness will increase. And get this, and we talked about this last week, because the lawlessness will increase and most people's love will grow cold. Now, again, we kind of talked about this before. In, um, in the Greek language, there's four different words, maybe five, but there's four basic words for the word love. In America, we say love. I love pizza. I love my wife. Is that the same thing? No. In, in um, Greek, the word agape means unselfish love. In other words, I don't, you know, I'm not asking for anything in return. I'm giving this straight out to you. And the Greek, and the, and the verb for agape is agapeo, which means I actively pursue an unselfish love. And so what's interesting here is the word you use for love is agape. So stop and think about that. The, it basically, if you read this again, it says, because the lawlessness will increase. Do we see lawlessness increasing in America? Okay. And most peoples, okay, agape will, will continue to grow cold. So think about that, especially believers. You know, if we, if we are the people who need to show, you know, because Jesus says the two greatest commandments, first of all, you are to agape the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then you are to agape your brother as yourself, okay? You're supposed to show that agape love. But if we're showing our agape love and our agape love is starting to grow cold, that's just basically meaning that, you know, hey, I'm missing the boat. If you read the first letter to the churches, it's written to Ephesus, which is kind of interesting. But it's written to Ephesus and Paul and um, John... Or Jesus tells John to write, he says, write this. You're doing a ton of good stuff. Proud of you. But I hold this one thing against you. You've lost your first agape. You've lost your first love. Okay? When we get so caught up in platforms, when we get so caught up in ourselves, in our church, Look at our church. Look what I do in my church. But we're not willing to get outside. The, you know, that's why I love COVID. You're not willing to get outside the church. You're not willing to go and, and, and talk to people who don't know Christ. You're not willing to go and do like we're doing and having a small group and a Bible study. You know, 
that's when that love begins to grow cold because all of a sudden now I got this agape love that God's given to me that I'm supposed to be sharing to whoever else. But I'm kind of holding it in. And so here's this agape love that's grown cold. It's not sharing it out. So this is one of the signs. And it says, but he who endures to the end will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. Now, folks that believe in pre-trip, they're going, oh, that just means that, hey, before the, before the pre-trip comes, the gospel is going to preach to the whole world. No, that's not what it says. It has nothing to do with rapture. When, if you read in Revelation, even if the rapture happens, which, you know, I kind of tend to believe this in some respect, but even if the rapture happens before this seven-year period of time, Jesus, it, God's going to in, inaugurate 144,000 Jews to share the gospel. So even during this seven-year period of time, no matter what you believe as far as in this platform, during this seven-year period of time, the gospel of Christ is going to continue to be spread. And if it ain't going to continue to be spread to that, there's going to be two witnesses that are going to be powerful in spreading. And, and the, gospel, the gospel message about Christ is going to continue on. The only thing that's going to stop in this period of time is what Paul writes in First and Second Thessalonians. He says that the restrainer is going to be removed to allow Satan to come in. So who's the restrainer? That's right. So what happens is, the, is in this, and we talked about this period that we're in. You know, they call it the period of the Gentiles. For the, for the believers, it's called... You know, the period of, 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 of the church, the church um, period, the growth of the church. But basically, there's this period of the Gentiles that's happening in this period right here. This, this, there's this gap between the 69th week and the 70th of sevens. And so what's happening is there's both the lawlessness that's growing, but there's also the gospel that's growing. And so we've seen, I mean, it's, it's, it's phenomenal in our time to really think about it, that, hey, Today, we talked about Wycliffe a couple weeks ago and stuff like that. Wycliffe used to sit down and have to figure out how to write the language and then handwrite and everything. Now they got computers. They got satellite phones to talk to each other. I mean, the gospel it is being spread across the world. But the, this gospel is still going to continue to be spread during a seven-year period of time. So when he says the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all the nations... Then the end will come. The end that's going to come is this final wrath of God. That's the end that he's talking about. It's not the first part of the seven years. It's towards the last part of the seven years. Verse 15. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, and here's that key little parenthesis, let the reader understand. So Matthew is writing this. He's writing it to the Jews. We don't know exactly if that's Jesus' words exactly or not, but what's, but what's being said in this is that he knows that there's going to be people reading this letter over and over and over again. And so there's a little parenthesis, and let the reader understand. So let me give you a little quick history. The temple was built. There was about a 400-year period of time from the time that um, the um, Malachi, am I right? The last book of the Old Testament is written, in, and then there's like there's no prophets speaking to the Jews, and so during this period of time, there's been a lot.